wickedness which he committed and does does what is lawful and right, he preserves himself alive because, because he considers and turns away from all the transgressions which he committed. He shall surely live, he shall not die. Yet the house of Israel says, The way of the Lord is not fair. O house of Israel, is it not my ways which are fair and your ways which are not fair? And see, these Israelites had a problem with how God, with how he, I guess you could say, went about justice for the people. They're saying it's not fair. This man was righteous and he does something wrong, so he dies. But if you take this guy who wasn't righteous and he turns from it, you save him. And they think how God's doing things is unfair. And it's the same thing you have with these guys um, with that, that worked all day. They're saying, we've done all this stuff, and these guys ain't they done this. And it's just not fair, God. And that's what God's telling. He's saying, my way, it, it's my ways which are fair and not yours. Because we see, we don't see things the way God sees them. And God, there's no one more fair, generous, just than God. Everything he does is fair. It doesn't matter how you see it or what you think. When God does something, it's fair, it's just, it's right. And and um and, and just think about it. We all get more than we deserve. Every human being deserves we deserve judgment. We deserve to be condemned. We deserve hell. But that's not what we get in Jesus Christ. That's why God sent Jesus, right? We escape the wrath of God and we can be deemed righteous through Jesus Christ. That's an amazing truth of scripture. That's an amazing thing God did, and he did it for all people. And whether someone believes that a hundred years ago or they believe it today, they all received the same grace, the same mercy, and that same salvation in Christ. And um, and you have to understand that God did this for all people. And I want you to look that when, when this guy goes out, he goes out to the marketplace, right? He's out there in the middle of the marketplace, the square where these people were commerce, and he's calling these people. Those standing idle, he's hiring them. He's saying, come, come to my vineyard. He's calling all the people there that are idle. They're standing around idle. They're doing nothing. They're up to nothing. They have a need, right? These people need work. They're out looking for work. They need money. It's just like a sinner. Somebody who realized, oh, man, I'm sinful. I, I break these commandments. I, I need Jesus. You're out looking. God's calling. He's out here in this marketplace, public call to these people. And, he, and he's calling all people, and that's what he does for us. Jesus calls all of us, and he doesn't turn anyone away. All the people out there who are looking for work, he didn't turn on them away. He accepted them. He brought them in and said, go work in my vineyard. And that's the same thing Christ did for us. John 3, 16 uh, and 17 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He so loved the world. Not just a certain people, not just a certain certain." Uh, demographic or anything like that or a certain type of culture he loved the world the entire world that's why he sent jesus christ and it says that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life for god did not send his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved all people he you got to understand christ died for the sins of the whole entire world and he did it so that so that we wouldn't be condemned but that that, but that we might be saved. Romans 2.11 says, For there is no partiality with God. He doesn't have favorites. He don't show favoritism. Everybody, He's not partial to anybody. Everybody receives the same judgment and, and all that. We all receive the same thing. Romans 10.11 and 13 says, For the scripture says, Whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. For there is no, distinct, no distinction between Jew and Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich to all who call upon him. The same Lord overall, he's rich to everybody, not just to certain people. He ain't richer to you because you've been serving him longer. He's rich to all of us. He's, he has grace upon all of us. All of us have eternal salvation. And he says, for whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And notice um, notice also who, who's not there being hired. See, he goes out in this marketplace and he's calling. He, he sees these people standing out of these people who that they need work. They're looking for a job. And when I thought about this, you know, if you ever go to, I don't know, I've never really seen it here in Springfield, but if you go to like, uh, especially down in Houston, you go to a lot of the like Lowe's or home improvement stores, and there will be people standing out there that you can hire as day laborers. People, you just pull up and be like, hey, this is what I'm doing. I'll give you 
I'll give you 75 bucks and buy your lunch and they'll load up. And you just take them and they'll do the work. I, I've never really seen it around here, but that's kind of like what's going on here. These guys are out there. They're waiting on work. These people will come through and hire them. But notice there's no rich folks out there. Pe people who've never seen their need, they're not out there. See, the rich, the people who are full, they're not out there. And it's not that, and it's not that they weren't necessarily called to work. They just didn't have a need to work. And that's, um, and that's, that's kind of how salvation looks, right? God's calling all people, but it's only those people who see the need that answer the call. And that's what's going on here. It's those, they, they have that need, they see that need, so they answer it. And it's a need that we all have. And, uh, and, and you know, that's the one part about, about being rich. And you know, Jesus right here, he's coming off of this parable and talking to this rich young ruler or, or the story of talking to this rich young ruler and he goes into this parable and it, and it just amazes me how much, um, and we've all been there, how much we strive to make money and, and, cons and, uh, and stockpile wealth. So many people do it. And, and we don't understand that, that how deceitful money is and how uh, the, the Bible has so many warnings against people who long to be rich and long to have money. Yes, there's nothing wrong with having money, but you have to, you got to have a balance there, especially, and especially learn to be responsible with it. You know, God doesn't, God doesn't allow any Christian to just be rich beyond measure and just stockpile that for themselves. I guarantee you. That's not, that's not the heart. He, he, he make, helps people and wants certain people to be rich so that they'll give to people, help people, and do things, be charitable. Um, Matthew 9, 13 says, But go and learn what this means. I desire compassion and not sacrifice, for I did not come to call the righteous but sinners to repentance. And uh, Matthew 19, 24 says, Again, I say to you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. It's a hard thing. And it's because those people, when someone's rich, when they're full of things like that, they don't, they just don't see their need for Christ. They just think, oh, I got it all together. I'm comfortable. I'm good. It's good. You know, there's nothing wrong with being in a state of, uh, I guess you could say need. There's nothing wrong with that. It's a good, it's, it's not a bad place to be. You know, I always think of the Israelites going across the desert. They was, every day they was in a state of need. They had, every moment they had to trust the fact that God would provide manna and that he would provide water for them every day. Because the manna come from heaven and that's what they ate. So they didn't know, hopefully today it rains down, but they had to have faith and trust in God that he was going to feed them and he was going to water them. And we know that the Bible tells us that if we pursue God's kingdom, right, if we pursue him first, and his kingdom that all these things will be added to us. We'll have clothing, we'll have food, and you will have water. And the great thing about being a Christian is you're surrounded by, you should be in fellowship with people. So now you're surrounded by people that if you fall on hard times or something happens, you got people there to help you. That's what we do for each other. We help each other. But going on and uh and like I said, he he uh um earlier is that that same salvation that I've received by faith and uh, that I've received by faith is the same salvation offered to all of these men and, and like I said you see these guys at first God comes out and and he said I'm going to give you this denarius and that's a fair thing because that's a day's wage is what that would have been and he's and, uh, and, and then he goes through and he gives them the, all the other guys the same thing and, and you know the same salvation I have is the same salvation everyone else gets the same grace I have. And, and that's the thing about God's kingdom is it's not, see, we base fairness and um, what people get off of merit, but God's kingdom is based off grace, which is unmerited. It's unmerited faith. It's, what, it's how God's kingdom works. And, and none of us deserve salvation. And over in Ephesians, uh, Ephesians chapter 2, I'm going to read, read verses 1 through 10 because um, 
This is a good one. It says, And you were dead in your trespasses and sins, in which you formerly walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, of the spirit that is now working in the sons of disobedience. Among them we too all formerly lived in the lust of our flesh. See, he's saying, right here, when I read that, I was thinking about, you know, we all too were once sinners, right? These same guys who were hired at first, they were in the same position at one part of the day as these other guys he hired, right? And uh, and among he says, among them too, uh, we too all formerly lived in the lust of our flesh, indulging the desires of the flesh and mind, and were by nature children of wrath, even as the rest. But God, being rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our transgressions, made us alive together with Christ, by grace you have been saved. And raised us up with him and seated us with him in heavenly places in Christ Jesus in order that in the ages to come he might show the surpassing riches of his grace and kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith and that not of yourselves, um, that not of yourself, it is the gift of God, not as a result of works that no one should boast. For we were... For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. And, uh, and that's the grace that we all that we all receive, and we have to and and we have to understand that that just like these you know these these first guys, they're forgetting it. And I like how God tells them um, there at the end. There at the end, he, he says, uh, "Is it not lawful for me, lawful for me to do what, uh, to do what I wish with uh, what is my own, or is your eye envious because I am generous?" And I think that's how you, you know, sometimes we look at people, or people get saved that we don't think are saveable, and we look at God, we kind of get an envious spirit towards God about it, like, how could they be saved? Look at the stuff they've done. We and people do that with sin. They think, oh, he's a, you know, he's a, whatever, a child molester, a rapist, or this and that. And people, and, and I'm just using these as an example. People look at those people and think, oh, they're unsavable. They're unsavable people. Why? Yeah, that's disgusting. It, it is. But if a person comes to faith in Christ, I don't care how bad they've sinned. They are forgiven of. They are forgiven. And they receive the same grace you receive, the same salvation you receive. It does not matter. Now, is there consequences for those kind of sins? Sure there is. And there should be. But they still receive salvation. They still receive grace from God. They still receive love, mercy, forgiveness. The same thing you've received and the same thing we all continually need. And, uh, and look, Romans 6.23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. You know, the wages of sin is death. Sin pays, but the free gift of God is eternal salvation in Jesus Christ our Lord. And that's what and that's what he's pretty much telling these guys. You know, I can do what I want with, with, with what's mine. And if, if you come work in my vineyard, you're all going to receive this free gift of eternal life in Jesus Christ. And, um, and, and notice also how this owner, he was continually going throughout the day calling people continually going out and if you look at it the day here would be the time that that uh, is, is the time frame when people can still be called to salvation and he's going out at these different times which shows like these different generations he's reaching or these different time periods in history until there comes a point to where he comes back and he says all right he's, he, he begins to judge these i guess you could call it a judgment but he gives to all right, come here. This is what you're receiving. Everybody received the same thing. They all did. They all received eternal salvation. You, you could say. That's what they received. They all received their pay for what they have done. And they all had they had all uh, they had all answered the call of the man coming out and they went into his vineyard. And since they were in his vineyard, they all got their pay. Whether they were there for an hour or they were there all day long. It didn't matter. They all received the same thing. And and um, and over in First Corinthians uh, chapter three, verse thirteen and fifteen, it says this, and this is where 
Um, and while this story over here is about God, God, God's grace and uh, the fact that we all receive salvation, we all receive that same thing over here in Corinthians. It shows us where I was saying about us receiving different rewards when we get to heaven. And it says this. It says, uh, each man's work will become evident for the day will show it because it for the day will show it because it is to be revealed with fire and the fire itself will test the quality of each man's work. If any man's work which he has built upon upon it remains, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work is burned up, he will suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved yet as through fire. And he's um, and over in Matthew, if you go to Matthew 25 and you read the story of the talents, that's, you know, all those men, God give them, he gave them kind of a different uh, levels of responsibility, but they all received the same thing. He, he said, he said on, on both the guys who did what they're supposed to, he said, uh, um, enter into the joy of my presence or something like that. Like, enter into my rest. And then he gave them, he gave them a, According to their responsibility, he gave them double that, right? One of them had like, just say 20, he gave him 40. The other one had 10, he gave him another 10. And that's uh, kind of how, that's how God's kingdoms work. But um, that's just what I want to look at this morning, how God's grace, how he disperses it. It's dispersed evenly to all people. His grace is, you know, um, and, and according to how, and I guess you could say the, the worst things you've done, you've received more grace, but we've all been forgiven, right, of our sins. And that's that's God's grace. Everybody, and I don't care how bad, we've all sinned. And I don't care, you can say this guy sinned worse than me or I sinned worse than him. Guess what? When you come to Christ, there's a middle line there. You all receive grace, you receive forgiveness, mercy, the love of God, and you receive eternal salvation. We've all received those things, all of us together, no matter how we, um, if we think somebody deserves it or not, if they come to Christ, they deserve it. I hear people all the time, and uh, and, and they're just they're just ignorant of the Word of God, or they're just, most of them don't know Christ, but you'll hear people say that, especially when it comes to, you know, people who do disgusting sins like rape and child molestation and stuff, and, and people will try to, like, damn people to where they can't be said. There's no way God would forgive that. Or they'll say, oh, there's a special place reserved for them. No, there's a special place reserved for those who don't put their faith in Christ. And that special place is hell. And that's why we all need Jesus Christ. I don't care what you've done. All of us need Christ. Everybody around you needs Christ. And that's the only way to escape that special place. I don't care if you I don't care if you just stole something once in your life or you've molested kids. If you don't know Jesus Christ, you're going to go to that special place. And we all have to realize that. And we all need Jesus Christ. Everybody does. And whenever we come to Christ, we all receive grace. We receive mercy. We receive forgiveness. And we receive the blessed hope of self, eternal salvation in that same Jesus Christ. And dear Lord, I just love you, Father, and I thank you, Lord, for your word and I just pray Lord Heavenly Father that um, that we never be envious or have, have a spirit of envy come up in our hearts Lord towards anybody but that we understand Lord that you can save anybody Lord you sent Jesus Christ into this world to die for the sins of the world Father God not just for certain people not just for certain sins but for sin just for sin alone Father God anything that hurts you or comes against you Lord and I just pray, Father God, that we understand that, Lord Heavenly Father, and that we know that you can save anybody regardless of what they've done. And I pray that people who struggle with thinking they're that they're not forgivable or worthy of your forgiveness, Lord, none of us are worthy of your forgiveness, but in your grace, you bestow it upon us, Father God, through faith in Jesus. And I pray that we understand that, Lord Heavenly Father, and I love you and pray that you bless the rest of our day and that you bring us back here safely this evening. Father God, and we love you and praise you in the name.